President Tinubu meets traditional rulers, urges them to engage their subjects to shelve proposed national protest in the interest of the nation. Just as the minister of the FCT, Jason Wiki, warns protesters to stay away from the federal capital territory as any act of violence will not be tolerated. The Trade Union Congress has also weighed in on issues of public safety in the case of any protest. In other developments, INEC chairman Mahmoud Yakubu makes case for constitutional amendment that will arm the commission with a legal framework to conduct elections for local governments. We have this and more on our program. I'm Fisayo Gunfui. Welcome. Leaders under the umbrella of the National Council of Traditional Rulers of Nigeria are appealing to Nigerians, particularly those planning the much-talked-about protests in the country, to deeply consider the possible implications of such agitation on the social and economic life of the general public and shelve the looming protests. It was after their meeting with President Bola Tinumbu at the State House. Leadership from the Federal Executive Council directly to the traditional rulers. It has never happened in our nation before. Never. This is the first time we are all experiencing it. People that are that are out there to maybe protest, it's their right, civic right. But let them put a face to it. And don't let it be hijacked by people that has ulterior motive. That is our stand. We condemn such acts fully. We traditional rulers are not engaged in people, especially the youth, coming out to start looting, to start breaking down law and order. We are parents, we are traditional rulers, we are closer to them, we are going to go back home and continue to engage them. The message we are taking back to our people is to be calm, to exercise patience and also to listen to uh, the words of wisdom coming from the traditional rulers, from the governors, because we have spoken to the president and he has given us the blueprint of what he has been doing over time. And uh, we are hopeful, you know, that inshallah it will be well. We have taken up what people are saying about the hardship, the insecurity and what have you. Alhamdulillah, the president listened to us. We are appealing to both Nigerians, Muslims and Christians, that they should be patient. And while the Trade Union Congress of Nigeria has warned against the possibility of the planned nationwide protests being hijacked by hoodlums and uh, called on the country's security agencies to ensure adequate security to protect lives and property of Nigerians. President of the Union, Fessor Sosifo, who gave the warning during a press briefing in Abuja, says the Union is not party to the protest. It is a briefing that centers on trading issues in the country. The planned nationwide protests 70,000 Naira new national minimum wage, and retorries making the rounds about Dangote refinery. TUC President Festus Osifo, while acknowledging the fundamental rights of citizens to protest, warned that such protests without a face may have mischiefs with hidden motives of causing destruction with heavy toll on the downtrodden. When it degenerates to chaos, when it degenerates to violence, when hoodlong, you know, hijack such protests, it may lead to several, several issues. And part of those issues could also be vandalization that we have also observed. And in most cases, people that are vandalized are downtrodden Nigerians like you and I. On the 70,000 Naira new national minimum wage, Osifo says the organized labor arrived at the figure after basing its negotiation on the inflation rate. We applied that of 2020, we applied that of 2021, we applied that of 2022, we did that up till 2024. And if you apply it, it will bring us to somewhere around 75,900 or thereabouts. So that is when you apply, when you compound the inflation figure. The union believes that for implementation of the consequential adjustment by government at all levels will reduce hardship. So from grade level 1 to grade level 17, apply the 133% equally. 
Ah, yes, and, and uh, across different steps. But at the end of the day, the, the, uh, the agencies that is saddled with that responsibility will come out with what they think. But we will have those conversations with them. If they come out with a table that we think is not favorable to our members, we will also object. The union is also concerned about the narratives surrounding the Dangote refinery, saying it is likely to scare investors and wants the federal government to address the issue head on. All right, so many issues to discuss, uh, so little time. But let me welcome my first guest. Uh, we have two in the studio, but the first guest uh, is uh, a member, uh, also first uh, chairman of the Rural uh, Development uh, Committee in the House and member representing East and Central and West. Uh, East and Central, West and Igwebe, Federal Constituency of Edo State. Marcos Onobu was also former Speaker of Edo State. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Officer. Good afternoon, Nigerians. Now, in I'm response to, to the agitations of some Nigerians who uh, are proposing nationwide protests, the House of Representatives uh, members slashed their monthly salary by 50% as a way of perhaps showing concern uh, to pacify agreed, you know, Nigerians generally. Uh, is there, are there other things perhaps that lawmakers are doing in the background also to make sure that uh, society is on an even keel? Yes, um, thank you, um, Pisayo. The decision to slash the 50% of um, our salaries at the 10th House of Representatives is to show to Nigerians that we are deeply concerned about the sufferings of our people and that we are all affected. The fact is that um, we are direct representatives of all Nigerians the 360 constituencies um, across the board, and will feel the pains of Nigerians. Apart from making that um, sacrifice, we too have looked at other areas to engage our people, and as well as also use the legislative tool to engage the government to see that uh, things are done better and Nigeria is better for it. You know, uh, recall that uh, when uh, President uh, Tinubu took this responsibility, he said he knows the issues. Uh, he's not here to complain, but rather to prefer solutions. So um, the cries of Nigerians today and the fact that he's been making you know, um, moves to making sure that uh, Nigeria is a better place, we are appealing to the people that we should give a bit of time. Um, yes, one year is gone, but it's not enough to measure you know, all the goodies that um, this administration is uh, bringing on board. So the appeal is that uh, good things don't come easy, uh, policies are put in place, and all of this will begin to materialize you know, within the shortest uh, possible time. So we're just appealing to all Nigerians to give time to this government to do all that it needs to do. You are a PDP member and the chairman of the House, House Committee, Committee on Rural, Rural Development. Development. Yes. Uh, that is an area that, you know, where Nigerians are, you know, the rural areas. Uh, what areas would you want government to bring things to bear in, in terms of the realities in those communities? Well, first, uh, the rural dwellers are the most hit with this uh, inflation. Don't forget that uh, the insecurity in the land has also affected rural dwellers. They cannot go to the farm, which has also led to food inflation in the country. Uh, we've had um, challenges of... Um, the rural dwellers taking off their agricultural products to you know, the main markets. We've had challenges of uh, a lack of infrastructures in the rural communities. We've uh, had challenges of um, uh, uh, health, lack of uh, health facilities. So since we came on board, we'll be looking at the books, see what has been done in the past, and see how we can change the narrative you know, going into the future. So a lot is being done. Uh, good enough is that uh, we participated in the 2024 appropriation where we have been able to capture most rural communities across Nigeria and uh, the uh, supplementary appropriation that uh, was passed a few days ago also actually captures the essence of rural development in Nigeria. Uh, so the promise is that in a few months, you know, when this uh, appropriation takes effect, uh, rural communities and rural dwellers will begin to you know, seeing the hand of government. 
All right, uh, we have a second guest uh, also joining us now, uh, the National Coordinator, uh, APC Renewed Hope Guard, uh, Dominic Alancha, who's joining us in the studio. Dominic, thank you for joining us, uh, uh, you know, uh, to sh a sort of short, uh, you know, uh, time to, you know, come in. But uh, let's quickly uh, bring you in. Your, your party came into power with a lot of promises. Uh, there seems to be uh, some gap between, uh, you know, those promises and actualities at the moment. Uh, but what are you doing quickly to bridge, uh, to bridge that gap? Well, uh, thank you very much. I think uh, the government is doing a lot in order to bridge that gap. Uh, Mr. President, when he came on board, like uh, my brother rightly said, he understands the problem and what he's doing is to introduce policies, you know, that will, you know, uh, uh, advance governance in the country. Uh, we know that uh, what have occasioned some of the hardship, you know, the sufferings that Nigerians are going through is the fact that uh, the president, when he came on board, he made a pronouncement, he introduced a policy where, you know, the first subsidy was removed. And if you look at it, that first subsidy regime was not actually sustainable. Uh, that is why he removed that, uh, you know, he made that pronouncement. So for me, I think the government is doing a lot, you know, in order to, you know, uh, ameliorate the problems and the sufferings, you know, that Nigerians are going through. So uh, the protests that they are planning, you know, I think it is not really necessary. This is, you know, a very avoidable one, and this is uh, something that we should not heed to. And I, um, I appreciate the fact that Mr. President, you know, has come out to appeal to Nigerians, to appeal to young people to shelve this protest because protest is not a one-stop solution to, you know, to ending hunger or putting an end to, you know, some of the mirage of problems and challenges, the insecurity and all whatnot that Nigerians are going through. Crisis, I mean, protest will not solve it. And, you know, the protest is faceless. Like a lot of people have said, uh, the, the TUC president have said it's a faceless one. It will only be sensible for us not to join them because you cannot join a protest that is, you know, faceless. Look at what happened in Lagos during the NSAS. It was a faceless a protest. It, you know, it, it, it was a breeding ground for, you know, hoodlums to hijack it, which they did. So we should not, you know, repeat what happened in Lagos. And we should also learn from other African countries the result of protests, you know, where it has brought them. So Nigeria should be patient, you know, with, with Mr. President. He's doing all it he can to ensure that he brings Suko, you know, to, to Nigeria. But I would like to call on, you know, Mr. President to ensure, because like I said, what occasion, what Nigerians are going through is the, you know, removal of subsidy, which was not sustainable. We supported him, we appreciate him, you know, for the political will he has to remove subsidy. But what he need to do in order, to, in the immediate, I mean, in the meantime, to ensure that, you know, Nigerians suffer are ameliorated because our fuel are being imported. You know, he should ensure that the refineries, you know, are put to order. He promised NLC when he came on board that the refineries will be put in order. What is happening to these refineries? They should tell us. And that is why we are not happy. Nigerians are not happy with the statement made by Farouk, uh, uh, Ahmed Farouk, the chairman of uh, uh, Nigerian, you know, mainstream and downstream uh, uh, petroleum uh, regulatory agency that, uh, you know, for us it's a sabotage to, you know, the emergence of of uh, I'll come to that uh, uh, briefly. Very, very, very quickly, uh, Dominic, I'll come to that because, uh, you know, it's, it's your party, really. Uh, but I'll come to that. I, I wanted to remember to you know we were having a discussion, especially in terms of inclusiveness, if there's a connection with government in terms of, uh, you know, when the people see themselves as part of governance, and that starts from the grassroots. Very, you know, recently we've seen that uh, judgment by the appeal court taking power straight to the grassroots, so that at the very uh, lowest, or you know, the first tier of government, one will say because it's coming from down, that's at the local government level, they begin to spend their own money. This is your constituency. You represent, you know, uh, the good people of Isa Central, uh, West and Igwebe. You have been, you know, a member of the State House of Assembly as well. Would this help in terms of at least feeling the impact, even from the local government level? People begin to see, okay, this is our money. We can actually spend it. We can hold the chairman accountable as against some windfall from Abuja. 
Yes, um, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria recognizes the federal government, the state government, and the local government. And I believe that uh, governors at every level, you know, will help to guarantee the Nigerian that we all desire. Uh, if the federal government is having its own opportunity without any interference, you know, to carry out its business, the state is having uh, um, their own responsibility. The local government should be able to also take the decision. And I particularly think that uh, the insecurity we talk about today in Nigeria is actually exacerbated because um, of the fact that the local government have not been really functional. So for me, uh, it's a welcome development, and uh, I think that uh, uh, the 774 local governments in Nigeria should take this as an opportunity to bring development you know, to the grassroots level. I once um, had interaction with one of my leaders in the local government, and he told me that some 20, 25 years ago, that the government they knew was the government at the local government level. So they didn't know much about the state government and the federal government. So the reason why you see that there are agitations, uh, ethnic uh, agitation, community agitations, regional agitation, is because they feel that local government, government at that local level is no longer available. So everybody is pushing you know, to come to the center. So once we're able to take power back to the people through the local government, would have solved, you know, quite a number of uh, the challenges we face in Nigeria. All right, ensuring those who lead at that level also will be important. And uh, our next story says the era of critical committee chairman in local government areas across the country may be over if the Independent National Electoral Commission is given the mandate to conduct elections at that level. This assurance came from the INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, during uh, a meeting. Uh, you know, between the Commission and the National Assembly Joint Committee on Electoral Matters following the recent Supreme Court uh, judgment granting financial autonomy to local governments. So, track record actually proves that we can do it. Take the case of the Federal Capital Territory. And this is one part of the country where INEC has conducted local government elections. And it has resulted in the following. It is perhaps the only part of the country where local government elections are held regularly. There has never been a caretaker committee for any area council in the FCT. This is perhaps what has been encouraging many Nigerians to say that if INEC is saddled with the responsibility of conducting local government elections, the same thing will be replicated. On our own part, the National Assembly is committed to throwing its full weight, full legislative weight for that matter, in support of every policy of this government that is people-friendly and development-focused. All right, we get to the home run now. Um, governance, as you said earlier, Honorable, is at the federal, the state, and the local government. And if uh, um, the government at the center is, uh, you know, assuring uh, people that uh, things will soon get better, we need to tighten our belts a little. How about the states? Uh, how have they been able to take ownership of this uh, you know, situation and uh, also perhaps uh, communicated with the people and then before we uh, talk about the, uh, the local government level. There's so much power at the state level as well. Uh, are they also being held accountable, Honorable? Well, for me, um, the, we, in Nigeria, we observe you know, a federating state where every state is a federating unit and at that level, every um, government at that level takes charge and takes responsibility of the security and development of um, their various states. I think Edo State, um, for example, the government has, uh, of Edo State have taken responsibility to see how they can ameliorate the sufferings of uh, its um, citizens. And for me, I think that um, the other states uh, taking cue from uh, Edo States, they are doing relatively well. But the challenges have been that uh, we are too partisan in thinking of, uh, you know, considering the issue of development in this country. You know, a situation where, you know, we're talking about security and people try to now bring in politics. We should try to shift politics because once elections are over, we should think of Nigerians, we should think of development, we should think of providing the basic amenities, you know, for our people. And um, by the grace of God, uh, if the, the, the leadership that the president has provided and the governors now working together to see how, you know, they think in the same line 
I'm sure that things will be um, better for it. Because the subsidy issue that we'll talk about today, uh, the president actually removed subsidy, but the fact is that more monies are now available to um, the various states. The state government should now utilize these resources to making sure that um, the sufferings of Nigerians uh, are reduced and they should alleviate the poverty you know, um, level in the country. So the government at the state level, they have a very huge role to play and they should put politics aside and think Nigerian first to bring about meaningful development. Dominic Kalancha, just in a few words, what do you want to see in the next few months, very quickly, from your party at the center? Well, in the next few months, I'd like to see, you know, uh, the, 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 the government taking proactive steps. steps. Uh, for now, I think there is need for serious engagement with various sectors of the economy, the young people, bringing them on board and stuff like that. Uh, because one of the things that is happening, he, he mentioned the governors. For me, I don't even think that these governors are taking responsibility at their state. Because after the removal of such subsidy, like he like, rightly said, the monthly allocation that goes to state, you know, has quadrupled. You know, so ideally we are supposed to see the effect of that, you know, the impact on ground at the local level. But we are not seeing it as a result of this, you know, joint account. But thankfully, we appreciate Mr. President for going directly to the Supreme Court to take power back to the people. And that is one of the you know, uh, the, the manifesto of the APC when it was formed in 2013, 2014 rather, that they are going to take power back to the people. So for us, it's a, it's a, it's a welcome development. So the president should open up doors, you know, his doors, in order to accommodate, you know, uh, engagement, you know, and I will call on the ministers also. They are only there to help him, you know, advance governance in this country. They should begin to engage people, you know, so that they can, you know, uh, advance governance. The idea of, you know, sitting and not even communicating some of the activities, for example, the Ministry of Agriculture, Interior, uh, Defense, and stuff like that. What are they doing? I know that they are doing something. They need to talk to Nigerians so that Nigerians will see the steps they are taking, what they are doing, because what they are doing, the result may not be on the immediate. And that is why I said that it's just one year. Let's give time. You know, in the next one year, we'll begin to see some of those results, you know, the impact of the policies they have introduced. But there is need for serious, robust engagement with other, you know, uh, with Nigerians. All right. That's why we're also engaging you on the Network Service of Nigerian Television Authority. Thank you, Dominic Alanja. Before I let you go, uh, uh, you know, uh, Honorable Member, you are from East and Central. And uh, I understand that is where uh, the people of Edo State are trying to go in the next uh, uh, few months. Uh, is that a given or uh, could there be surprises? Very quickly. Well, it's a given uh, that the two major political parties have, um, you know, picked their candidates from Edo Central, uh, the central part of Edo State. It's a given that by the grace of God, the central will make the next governor of Edo State. All right, that has been political update for today. We'll be back again on Tuesday. Between now and then, play your politics for the greater good. Many thanks to my guest, uh, Dominica Lancha of the APC, and of course, uh, uh, Honorable Member Nobu, former Speaker, Edu House of Assembly, and Chairman of uh, Rural Development in the House, uh, House Committee uh, on Rural Development in the House of Representatives. Uh, that has been political update for today. Keep it locked on Nigerian Television Authority for news, reviews, previews, and interviews. And between now and when we see you again, Think Nigeria, think progress. Bye-bye now.